and welcome to Newsweek South Asia, a program that exposes Pakistan's role in Nexus in promoting global terrorism and its funding. Here are the headlines. Islamic State Bomber Kills Dozens at Kabul Water Registration Center Pakistan-sponsored militants create havoc in Jammu and Kashmir Terror outfits act as proxies of Pakistan Army, says exiled Kashmiri leader. And religious minorities in Pakistan face persecution by Islamic terrorists. Let's begin the show with Afghanistan, where terror threat looms large. In cowardly and barbaric terror attacks in Kabul and Baghlan province of Afghanistan, over 50 people were killed and dozens have been injured. The attacks claimed by the Islamic State comes ahead of parliamentary and district council elections in the country. Newsweek South Asia has a report. The Islamic State went on to claim responsibility for the suicide bombing in a voter registration centre in Kabul that killed 57 people, including eight children. Kabul bombing was followed by an explosion in Pule Khumri city in Baglan province, killing at least six people and wounding five others. Eyewitnesses in Kabul claim the bomber approached the centre by foot where people were waiting in line to register themselves for the October elections. The blast took place in dasht e an area of western Kabul inhabited by many members of the mainly Shiite Hazara minority, which has been repeatedly hit by attacks claimed by Islamic State. Afghan election officials have slated October 20 as the date for the upcoming parliamentary and district council elections, which has been delayed a couple of times over the past years. The voter registration process started on April 14 for the polls. More than 7,000 voter registration centres have been set up across Afghanistan to handle about 10 million people. The voters will cast their ballots to elect members of the 249-seat lower house of parliament for a five-year term. But with the increase in the number of attacks in the country, there is widespread scepticism that they will take place. یعنی علاقه مندی مردم یعنی او قدر زیاد به انتخابات نیست به خاطر که یعنی نسبت به سالهای گذشته و نسبت به یعنی اوضاع و حملات مردم که ما می‌بینیم یعنی بسیار مردم یعنی به انتخابات نمی و نمی‌خواد که انتخابات بده به خاطر که روز روز ما که می‌بینیم یعنی اوضاع وخیم‌تر شده میره The terror attack at election registration center saw worldwide condemnation Calling it an attack on the democratic rights of Afghans, India called it a cowardly and barbaric act. This is not only an attack on innocent civilians but also an attack on the democratic rights of the Afghan people. Our thoughts and prayers are with the family members of the victims and we wish quick and complete recovery to the injured. India stands ready to extend all possible assistance including for treatment of those injured. On several occasions, Afghanistan has accused Pakistan for sheltering terrorists who carry out attack on government installations and civilians. For many decades, Afghanistan remains victim of terrorism and hundreds of civilians lose their lives every year. Moving on, Pakistan-backed militants continue to create mayhem in India's Jammu and Kashmir state. Recently, the militants brutally killed a local politician and had an encounter with the Indian security forces which has created fierce psychosis among the local people. We have a report. 
Militants from across the border have again made an attempt to disrupt peace in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. On April 25th, armed militants attacked the convoy of a local politician identified as Gulam Nabi in South Kashmir's Pulwama district. Three people, including Gulam Nabi and two security personnel, were seriously injured in the firing. Nabi succumbed to his injuries while being taken to a hospital. In the Kashmir Valley, political workers have become easy targets for militants in recent years. The police are suspecting Pakistan-occupied Kashmir-based Hizbul Mujahideen outfit behind the attack. Rajpura Chok mein jo hai, is pe militant ne isko intercept kiya. Shayad usko iski movement ka pata chala tha aur wahan pe is pe firing ki gayi aur iski PSOs bhi zakhme hoye. Ye kam kar gaya shortly aur PSOs jo hai unko majrood alat mein further treatment ke liye aage refer kiya gaya. Kis outfit ka hoga ye? A majority of these militants are being trained in Pakistan-occupied Kashmir and come to Jammu and Kashmir after crossing the border. The Indian security forces carry out operations to flush out these militants from the state. In an encounter that began on April 24th, Four militants of the Jaish e Muhammad outfit were killed by the security forces in Tral sector of Jammu and Kashmir. Two armed forces personnel were also martyred during the operation. The militants killed in the operation include Omar Khalid, top commander of the Jaish e Muhammad outfit. The others have been identified as Ashfaq Ahmed Khan, a foreigner who was the area commander of Tral, and Abid Makbul, a local who had joined militancy around two months ago. Right now, in the encounters in Kashmir, mainly South Kashmir, especially Tral, which is one of the hotbeds of uh, uh, terrorism, uh, while the terrorists are being eliminated, which is a good uh, sign, but we also are taking hits. I think we need to look at that, because two security people killed while four are eliminated in every encounter, you see that some of the security people also get martyred. So we've got to re-examine that so that Indian security forces do not get martyred uh, in the way they are. So that's, uh, I think, one, one issue which is there. But the fact is that we are eliminating terrorists is a great plus and shows that the security grid is very much in place and is effective. Pakistan's sponsorship to terrorism remains a major cause of concern for India and the rest of the world. New Delhi has recently denied having any dialogue with Pakistan and the revival of the Sark summit because of Islamabad's continuous denial to take any action against terror outfits. Pakistan is once again trying to revive the Sark summit this year. India has categorically stated that they will not be participating in the Sark unless and until Pakistan creates a congenial atmosphere for substantive talks to take place. And creation of a correct environment means that Pakistan will have to stop terrorism, they will have to stop activities which are meant to harm India in terms of drug trafficking, in terms of fake currency, ceasefire violation, and send, sending in infiltrators into the valley. All this has to come to a stop. And Pakistan has to act in a transparent manner against those who were involved in Mumbai incident as well as Pathan Kota Dori. Till date, mountains of evidence has been given to Pakistan. However, Pakistan continues to be in a denial mode. India has conveyed this to UN Security Council, to the Western world, to Pakistanis, all with the French China. Also that talks cannot take place unless Pakistan exceeds to these. And we have stated that we are not going to meet Pakistan on any bilateral or multilateral forum as long as Pakistan provokes and promotes uh, terrorism in its country, uh, which is against India. Uh, so obviously Pakistan has first got to do something about terror before we go to meetings like SARC, the summit at SARC or any other bilateral or multilateral show. 
बी एड द तालिबान हकानी नेटवर्क लश्कर तोयबा और जैश मोहम्मद पाकिस्तान रिमेन्स अ सेफ हेवन फॉर दीज ड्रेडेड टेरर ऑर्गेनाइजेशन वर्किंग ऑन द बीहेस्ट ऑफ पाकिस्तान आर्मी एंड इंटेलिजेंस एजेंसीज दीज आउटफिट्स आर नॉट ओनली क्रिएटिंग मेहम इन इंडिया एंड अफगानिस्तान बट आर अ कॉज ऑफ कंसर्न फॉर द वर्ल्ड Let's move on to Pakistan which allegedly provides shelter to some of the world's most dreaded terrorists beat al-Qaeda founder Osama bin Laden or Lashkar-e-Taiba chief Hafiz Muhammad Said they were provided a sanctuary here under the patronage of the Pakistan army many such terrorists are getting training in Pakistan occupied Kashmir that is POK and they act as proxies of the Pakistan army and intelligence agencies Newsweek South Asia has a report Exile Kashmiri leader Shaukat Ali Kashmiri has accused the Pakistan army for backing dreaded terrorist organizations like Lashkar-e-Taiba and Hizbul Mujahideen and using them as its proxies. Kashmiri has shown concern as majority of these terror outfits are based in Pakistan occupied Kashmir POK. They have been receiving training and weapons from the Pakistan army who use them as proxies against India and carry out terrorist activities in Jammu and Kashmir Pakistan ke jo general hai ye sirf apne logon ko fata karte hain ye bandook ke zor pe unki unko taabedari pe majboor karte hain jangon ke liye to inhone private militia banayi hui hai different organization lashkar-e-taiba hizbul mujahid ye sab jo hai wo मिलिट्री जनरलों की प्रोक्सीज है इन पे किसी पाकिस्तान की सिविल पॉलिटिकल पार्टी का कोई असर सूख नहीं है ग्रोइंग इनस्टेबिलिटी एंड लैक ऑफ डेवलपमेंट इन पाकिस्तान ऑक्यूपाइड कश्मीर पी ओ के फोर्स्ट मेनी पीपल टू माइग्रेट अब्रॉड कश्मीरी हु हिमसेल्फ लिविंग इन एग्जाल सेस दिस इज अ डिलिबरेट अटेम्प्ट बाय पाकिस्तान टू यूज द टेरिटोरी फॉर जिहादी एक्टिविटीज सत्तर सालों में हमारे जो जराए हैं रसल रसाइल के जो आमदन के हमारे जितने फॉरेन रेमिटेंसेस हैं वो आज़ाद कश्मीर के लोगों की वेलफेयर के लिए उनकी एम्पावरमेंट के लिए तो खर्च हुए नहीं हैं ये तो उन्होंने एक जहादी कल्चर प्रमोट करने के लिए एक, 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 एक कैंप लगाया हुआ है और फलसफा क्या दिया हुआ है कि ये दुनिया आर्जी है इसमें हमने मर जाना है एक बेगानगी रख के तो इलाके लेना चाहते हैं वसाइल पे कब्जा करना चाहते हैं लेकिन कश्मीरी को कहते हैं ये दुनिया तो आर्जी है इसमें तुम्हें अच्छे अस्पताल की क्या जरूरत है तुम्हें अच्छी तालीम की क्या जरूरत है तुम्हें इस मुल्क में रहने की क्या जरूरत है पैसे जाके सऊदी अरब में कमाओ पैसे जाके अमेरिका बरतानिया उधर कमाओ एक फोर्स माइग्रेशन है जिसको लोग समझ नहीं रहे पाकिस्तान एंड चाइना आर रैपिडली एक्सप्लॉइटिंग द रिसोर्स इन पी ओ के एंड गिल गिट बाल्तिस्तान बाई गिविंग एक्सेस टू मल्टी बिलियन डॉलर चाइना पाकिस्तान इकोनॉमिक कॉरिडोर सी पैक प्रोजेक्ट Kashmiri warns of dire consequences as CPIC project will marginalize the indigenous people of Gilgit Baltistan and POK. Duniya ko ye samjhna chahiye jo aaj business ke liye ki ab China ke paas trillion dollar aur trillion and trillion dollars jo hai wo reservoir hain aur uske se qarza le rahe hain lekin wo ye nahi dekh rahe hain ki afrika ke andar ya jin jagahon pe bhi china iska influence badh raha hai wahan ultimately us abadi ki seht sukad rahi hai uske wasail sukad rahe hain uski zindagi din ba din mehdood ho rahi hai aur pakistan ko dekh lijiye ki aaj pakistan ka jo samajhdar tabqa hai jo danishwar hai जो पार्लियामेंटेरियन है वो अपने सीरियस कंसर्न का इजहार कर चुका है सी के बारे में वो कहते हैं मतलब असम्बली के अंदर लोग खड़े होकर कहते हैं कि ये ट्रांसपेरेंट प्रोजेक्ट नहीं है और चाइनीज उनको कह रहे हैं कि आप सारे अपने स्टैंड छोड़ के फौरी तौर पर एनेक्स करें कलगित बल्तस्तान
A part of erstwhile princely state of Jammu and Kashmir, POK and Gilgit Baltistan, remain under Pakistani occupation since 1948. The people here are suffering in the hands of both state and non-state actors. A majority of them demand freedom from Pakistan's forceful occupation. In another news from Pakistan, the religious minorities have been facing persecution in the hands of the Islamic fundamentalists, be it Hazara Shias or Ahmadiyas. They are being targeted and mistreated by the state and non-state actors. We have a report. On April 22nd, two people from the Hazara community were shot dead in a sectarian attack in Kuwaita city of Balochistan province of Pakistan. In Pakistan, targeted killings of minorities have continued and are being carried out by the Taliban, Islamic State and other Sunni Muslim militant groups for their religious beliefs. Hazaras, whose population is around half a million in and around Kuwaita city, are mainly Shiite Muslim community. Another community which has been facing persecution in Pakistan is the Ahmadiyya. Since Pakistan is home to the largest population of Ahmadis in the world, they have been facing persecution by Muslim fundamentalists who consider them as non-Muslims. You see, the important point to understand is that the Human Rights Charter assures every human being freedom of religion, which is very important. And freedom of religion has to be respected by all states, by all regimes, by all countries. It's no use a country insisting or emphasizing or trying to pressurize people to accept one faith and reject another. That doesn't go. The world would not accept it. So the Ahmadiyya community is a very peaceful community everywhere in the world. And one of the fundamental teachings of the Ahmadiyya community for its members is to always remain loyal and faithful to the government of the day. Ahmadiyya community in Pakistan is facing discrimination since 1984, when the then president of Pakistan, Muhammad Ziaul Haq, brought the Ordinance 20 in the constitution. The legislation restricted the religious beliefs of the Ahmadiyya Muslim community, prohibited the reading and the writing of the Quran and building mosques. It also prohibits calling themselves Muslims and threatened prison terms for any individual who in any manner whatsoever outages the religious feelings of Muslims. In 1984, Zia came and he said, oh, this is not enough. We have to paralyze, we have to cripple the Ahmadis so that they cannot even move, do anything at all. So he came up with this Ordinance 20, you see, and he amended the blasphemy laws and he also amended C-298 uh, and he added on uh, Article 298B, you know, which uh, if I'm these were to use the normal terminologies of Islam, they could be imprisoned for three years and fined for 50,000 rupees. A majority of people facing blasphemy charges are from the Ahmadiyya community. The Lahore-based Centre for Social Justice estimated that at least 1,472 people have been charged with blasphemy from 1987 to 2016. Of the 730 Muslim charges, 501 were Ahmadis. The blasphemy laws were, as I told you earlier on, if I, as an Ahmadi, said that I am a Muslim, that's blasphemy. And I could be hanged for that, you see, or life imprisonment or whatever it is. And you know, nearly 53 of our Ahmadis have been charged under the blasphemy laws. And a lot of them have been, you know, locked up in black cells waiting for their deaths. Pakistan has forever been an intolerant country, especially for the religious minorities, whether they are Hindus, Sikhs, 
Christians or even Ahmadiyyas. This is the worst human rights violation which the international community needs to review. Pakistan has the worst record of human rights. And with that, we come to the end of this edition of Newsweek South Asia. We will be back next week with more news, views and analysis from the subcontinent. Meanwhile, do keep writing to us at nwsa at anin.com. This is Mariam signing off on behalf of the entire production team of Newsweek South Asia. Goodbye and take care. <laughs>